The second lightning talk is Truebit, Jason Teutsch. Welcome here, come on stage. Yay, he just flew in. And Jason just published um, a paper for Truebit. I think the rest is up to you. You will explain. Um, thank you for coming and thank you for being here. Thanks, Angela. I'll take it from here. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing that one. Oh, wow, that's, that's better contrast than I got on, wow. It's, it's still kind of trippy though, right? Hey, great news, we have a token. Um, oh, this is what I need. I know you came all the way here to Berlin to hear that. Uh, so, well, uh, Truebit is a computation oracle for blockchains, okay? So if you want, if you're, if you know what a blockchain is, if you're running out of gas, you can use Truebit. If you want to run functions using normal programming languages, also can use Truebit. So that is solving the problem of limited computational power of smart contracts. So yeah, and as I said, it's here, it's a blockchain enhancement, uh, also known as layer two that sits on top of other existing systems which enable scalable trustless computation. And that's pretty much what you need to know for this talk. So if you think about it, there are really three things that are happening in this, in this system um, in terms of, uh, well, what do you need a token for? So one is if you're, it's a system where anybody can issue a task, anyone can get a reward for performing that task. Um, so we have a tasking function, we have a reward function, and we have uh, the staking function, which, um, which we need for, well, somewhat technical reasons, but basically to um, eliminate spam and people who are doing wrong things. So uh, that said, uh, we are, so, so as I said, we are, the goal is here is to do decentralized trustless compute. So there are no distinguished nodes. That means basically no governance. Uh, the, it's a public permissionless system. So all these sort of what you would expect from a, a blockchain, I suppose. But what I really want to focus on today is talking about dynamic market pricing without price oracles, which might be useful in other contexts as well. But specifically here, because I mean, when we we're just talking about, I mean, this is kind of a generic setup, right? So, so in other words, how much you're going to pay for a task, how much you're going to get for a reward. So, in the case of a, um, in the case of a task, you want a stable task. I mean, stable, stable value for for the cost of a task, right? I mean, if you, um, if you bought enough fuel to fly across the Pacific Ocean and the price of fuel changed while you were on your way. You didn't want to have to stop in, in Hawaii because the gas evaporated due to the price uh, fluctuation. Okay, fine, simple example. And of course, if you're, if you're participating in the network as a solver, you want to make sure you're getting some worthwhile rewards. So obviously let's get the, the elephant, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This, what's, what's wrong with the single, single token? Why do you have to separate consumer and service tokens? So let's take in two e examples here, simple as so a case study. Ethereum, okay, so Ethereum, greater use of ETH, the, the Ether, the local token, implies higher price of USD. I mean, we kind of saw that in 2017, but it was also somewhat driven by sort of this, the miners sort of fixing the, the price of the, the, the gas price didn't change and the US dollar price went up, but really it could also be driven by real demand as well, I guess, for the, for, 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 for the network token. Okay, so this, this doesn't really scale. You can't, you know, you, it's the opposite of what you want. As the number of users goes up, it, it gets more expensive. You're, you're just going to cap out. So in Truebit, what we have is you want to, well, you obviously, as I said, you want to pay for tasks with a stable token and you want to pay the re reminding rewards. These should be the ones that absorb whatever price fluctuations we have in re relative to free out currency. And as I always would caution, you don't want to design any, ever design, well, I shouldn't say never, but I don't want to design a system where uh, it pays out more than you paid into it because now you've just created a spam machine where people 
issue themselves tasks and get rich. So, and in fact, nobody ends up winning because, well, that's supply and demand. Fine. So, um, so how do we do it? So, I'm 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 going to just outline our our bag of tricks. One, the first thing that I call this like collective pricing. So. Dual staking. This means that every solver and verifier in the network, who are the ones that are performing your computational tasks, are going to stake both two kinds of tokens, the tasking token and the reward token. And they also, when they stake, they're going to provide a local price between the two of those, two of those tokens. So, so and, and in order to make sure they give you the right local price, anybody can now show up and exchange at that price. So if you priced it wrong, then yeah, so you're, you've just uh, uh, permitted somebody else to trade at that price within some, you know, say reasonable bounds. And and as I said, this is this is a technique that will generalize into external tasking tokens. I'm going to go on that later slide. Obviously, this is a lightning talk, but the conversions conversion rate. So so the tasking conversion rate, this is the actual rate you're going to use here, is, is the median of all the local prices. So notice here I never talked anything about using an exchange or anything like that. So it's all internalized that the staking, what happens is if you want to take, this is only going from, you know, you can, you can burn the smart contract of Truebit allows you to burn the TRU in order to mint CPU tokens at the rate that's designated by this protocol. And if you want to go in the other direction, private tasks, check out the paper. Okay, fine. So now let's talk about CPU and TRU relative to US dollar and just ask the basic questions here. So I uh, emphasize that as we have this is stable coin, stable relative to the utility, not necessarily stable relative to the US dollar, but could be. Um, and we fix just say one CPU token always buys you one computation cycle in Truebit, whether you use it today, tomorrow, or on your birthday. So question, what happens if the CPU price is too low relative to the USD? So, so this, is, this, this, this is something that could happen, and you might think people just walk off and stop solving. And I could argue the opposite, that actually rational solvers and verifiers will be incentivized to hodl TRU, and sort of the, the simple reason is that you, when you, when you hodl, then the the supply goes down, the total supply, net supply of CPU, TRU conglomerate, and this effectively increases the reward value in the long run as the, you know, other people are spending, and it increases the value to the people who are holding the token, so it's exactly what you want, so that makes it actually go back up. On the other hand, if the price would be too high, then of course the, 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 the solver, um, they can, the solver verifier, that's holding true. You can absorb some of the value also by by just changing the, the the median price, what I call the tasking conversion price. So, and then of course, what happens if exchanges pop up? Obviously, we can't prevent it from happening, but it doesn't mess it up. So that's that's uh, again lightning talk. So why? And of course, another question that might pop up is why can't you just use why can't you just use Dai? Um, so for one thing, this this doesn't solve the basic question, which is how to price a task. Um, I don't know how many die should one pay for a task. And in fact, there's a big problem in Truebit that if you underprice the task, well, if you price it so low that nobody else is going to do it, well, then you just solve it yourself and get whatever answer you want. So that's one of the sort of basic uh, challenges that, that we're, we're trying to solve here. And of course, you want a system which aligns minor incentives, builds network effects, uh, what else do we have on the list? Let's see. Truebit needs a stable token, stable, which is, means token stable relative to tasks, not relative to USD. That's the airplane example I gave earlier. Uh, existing stable coins are, of course, increase complexity and or can decrease uh, security. And the last point is that, of course, CPU itself is already a stable coin, which is pretty simple because I was able to explain it in about two minutes. Okay, fine. So, so, and then the last question you, you might be wondering is, okay, great. So now we have this perfect steady state system. How do we get there? So it's not, Truebit is not like, is not like, um, is not like Bitcoin. Uh, you can't just turn on your laptop and start mining TRU because you have to put in a stake in the network. The other problem is if nobody had the tasking token, 
a priori than who's paying for the task that you're solving. So these, this, this means that you need to address the deployment issue. And there are different ways that you can do it. Um, this includes you know, in, enabling external tokens to be used for these in, in tasks through these conversions. You could also, in the, in the sort of really short term, stake with external tokens and, and possibly even you know, use some sort of governance conversion whitelisting, refer you to the paper there. And here's the paper. Oops, it's my first time using that app. Um, so I'm perfect timing. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you. Any, any questions? No thank you, Jason. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Jason. Um, yeah, as mentioned, this paper is brand new. So take a look at it and um, get in touch with Jason as well. So you can find his contacts on our website. And of course, Jason, this is your T-shirt. Whoops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you.